Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. Today's video is just one of many for the April 2024 Oso oh Inspired Hop. This is a collaboration that I host here on YouTube, where me and some of my crafty friends create new projects based upon the same piece. As you hop along today, which I'll tell you how to do that here in just a minute, you're going to see how the same piece can inspire so many different projects. I know that I'm going to have fun hopping along and I hope you do too. To see what everyone else is creating, you can check out the description box below for a link to the playlist and I also have each person's channel linked individually. And at the end of this video, I will have the playlist as an end card, so you can just click on that. This month, we're being inspired by the card you see on screen now, and it was created by Danya of the Danya's Doodles Instagram account. I will have a link to the inspiration piece and her main account in the description box below. I hope you'll go stop by and see what else that she's been creating. As soon as I saw Danya's card, it reminded me of a very early sheet load of cards. That was the October 2019 free printable. This is a Z fold card where half of the front folds back and then there's that rectangle piece on the top that you decorate for your focal point. If you haven't yet downloaded this free printable and you want to make some of your own cards after watching my video, I will have the October 2019 debut video linked in the description box below. You'll go watch that and I'll tell you exactly how to download the free file. Originally, this sheet load was gonna make eight cards because it called for four different 12 by 12 pattern papers. You guys, I don't know what I was thinking back at the beginning, thinking you could find four pattern papers that go together. Sometimes it's hard for me to find three when the sheet load calls for it. So today, that's actually what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to switch it up a little bit, and instead of making eight cards, I will be making six, and I'm just going to be using three different pieces of pattern paper. These sheets come from Simple Stories Fresh Air Collection, and for my focal points, I'm going to use a vintage Spellbinder set, one of my very favorite. I just love these butterflies, and I will be using a sentiment from my abstract botanical set that I created with Not Too Shabby. Now, as I get into the process, I will tell you more about the products and tools I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by cutting my pattern papers. Once again, I am using three pieces instead of four, but I will use the same cutting dimensions. Now, since I already have a process video that goes over exactly how to cut each piece, I won't do that here today, but I will link that video in the description box below. Here's a look at all of the pattern paper pieces cut. I have A, B, C, and D. The cutting guide originally called for two pieces of cardstock for CS1 and CS2, but because I'm only making six cards, I'm going to show you how to cut your cardstock so you only need one piece for each. For CS1, I'm going to cut my cardstock in half at four and a quarter inches wide. Then these pieces both get rotated and cut into sections that are three and a quarter inches wide. These pieces are going to end up being the mats for pattern paper piece B, just like you see here. For the second piece of cardstock CS2, I'm going to cut two columns that are four inches wide and then rotate those and cut each piece into three pieces that are three inches wide. Now there is that little bit left over at the end and I will actually be using that later for my sentiments. These pieces will go on the inside of the card so you have a place to write your personal message. I forgot to mention that I only need one piece of each of those card stocks because originally you were going to cut that focal point oval from those as well. But for me, I won't be using that, so I'm done with the main cutting. 
Now I'm going to show you how I made my card bases. You could definitely just fold these by hand if you want, but I do like to use my score buddy and make some score marks. Now these pieces of cardstock, which are eight and a half by five and a half, already had a score in the center at four and a quarter. So now what I'm going to do is score at two and one eighth which on the score buddy, there is actually a dot there that represents where that's at. So that is super nice. Once you have all those score lines, you're going to fold them. The card gets folded in half. And then that flap that we just scored at two and an eighth gets folded back. So it's just this fun Z fold here, just something different, but super easy. I continued scoring and folding the rest of the card bases, most of which I did off camera. Once those were all done, I brought in pattern paper piece B and I got it adhered to the center of the CS1 mats. Then I brought in my piece C's and B's and these are going to go on that little fold back part on the front. Now originally the sketch and supply list called for different pattern papers on each of these little sections, but today I'm going to be using the same. Now one thing I did have to keep in mind, especially here with the writing, was that I used the pieces that flowed together just so they didn't look a little off. After those pieces were in place, it was time for me to make what I call my card kits. And that's just when I take a minute or two to put the pattern papers together that I want for each card. This helps me kind of see what they'll look like and it ensures when I get to the end that I don't end up having two of the same pattern papers in different places on the card. Now I do show my whole process here on screen, so feel free to slow this down if you want help putting all of yours together. Because I use the three pattern papers and there are six cards, all of my cards do look slightly different. The next step is to get pattern paper piece A adhered to its section on the card, which leaves a nice white border on the inside. And then we're going to put the matted pattern paper piece B onto the front of the card. Now when you do this, you'll want to make sure you only put adhesive on the back of that where it will be adhered to the card. You don't want to put it all over or your card will be glued shut. Ask me how I know. While I finish the second card, I'm curious to know, have you ever made a fun fold card like this? If so, let me know in that comment section below. Once all of the pattern papers were in place, it was time to add CS2 to the inside. This is the piece for your personal message, and when the card is closed, it will be hidden from the front. You'll kind of want to center it in the pattern paper area, and before you press it down too firmly, make sure that it is covered. Here's a look at all of the assembled card bases. Now we just need some decoration. For this, I'm going to be using the Whimsical Wing set from Spellbinders. I will be cutting the shadow from vellum and the detail from bubblegum pink. These pieces are going to be layered together and I will be using Barely Art liquid glue for that. I'm just going to put a drop in the center of the body. And this is so later if I want to, I can fold those up to give the butterflies a little more dimension. To help the pieces stick together, I did place each one under a clear stamp block while I glued together the remaining butterflies. For my sentiments, I did some free range stamping with the Hello sentiment from the set and VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Free range stamping is just what I call it when I don't use a Misty. Now because it is a clear stamp, I am using my foam pad beneath it, and I stamped seven just in case one didn't punch out correctly. But once those were all stamped, I brought in my small, I think it's a one inch circle punch, and punched each of those out. Now that the pieces were all ready, it was time to get my focal points assembled. For this, I added some foam to the back of each of the sediment circles. And then on the butterflies, I used the liquid glue once again, and I tried to put dots behind where the butterfly would hide it. Just since I'm using vellum, that helps hide it a little bit better. I placed this at an angle above the sentiment, and then to finish the butterfly off, I use kind of a white iridescent gem in the middle. That just adds a little extra shine. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's cards. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Don't forget now to visit the collaboration team cards by clicking on those links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.